Thank the gentleman. The gentlelady now from New Mexico is recognized for her five minutes. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I just want to clarify a few things. And Mr. Walter, I actually really appreciate the comment you made at the beginning of your testimony about having an honest conversation with differing opinions. That is exactly what public discourse needs to be. So I very much appreciate that. But I also think it's important to be clear on what perspectives people are representing when they are in front of us in the public discourse. So Mr. O'Neill, I do appreciate you being here today and I respect that um, you are bringing your perspective on these issues. I know in your opening statement that you submitted to the committee that you stated you're here in your personal capacity, which I appreciate. Um, but I just wanna clarify, you are employed by the Daily Signal, correct? I am, correct. And the Daily Signal is a publication of the Heritage Foundation, correct? Yes. And that's why your bio appears on the Heritage Foundation. And I just want to be clear, the Heritage Foundation is a conservative think tank that many of us know, and among other things, it uh, supports both 501c3 and c4 activities, including engaging and influencing both policy and politics. It gives donations to conservative candidates like Donald Trump. And on the C3 side, it's currently engaged in an effort called Project 2025, which is laying the groundwork for a White House more friendly to the right. That's actually what it says on the website. Now, Mr. Walter, uh, you're here in your capacity uh, working for an organization called the Capital Research Center, which was founded also by a former senior vice president for the Heritage Foundation. And I find it ironic that our two majority witnesses are both here and affiliated uh, with these conservative organizations that are, of course, funded by many different sources, but among the donors include the Koch brothers, the Bradleys, the Mercer family, and a donor-advised fund called the Donors Trust, which is bankrolled largely by the Koch brothers and the Searle Foundation, which among other things has funded work to weaken child labor laws, gut voting rights across the country, to try to gut affirmative action policies, and to push climate denialism, and also help to prepare for a Trump administration and a second term. So while I do appreciate that we have different points of view represented here in front of the committee today, I think it's bizarre to talk about the influence of dark money on policy without identifying that we actually have two great examples here in front of us today. So Mr. Painter, we appreciate you traveling from Minnesota to come be with us today and your advocacy on behalf of your community. Your former Bush administration official, um, thank you for your service, especially around ethics issues. And you mentioned in your testimony that you came to the White House uh, during the height of the Jack Abramoff scandal, during which uh, Mr. Abramoff defrauded American Indian tribes of millions of dollars and was involved in an influence peddling scheme at the Department of Interior. And I noted during your testimony that you said that uh, it, the Department of Interior was certainly not one of your shining examples of ethical behavior during your tenure in the White House. So I just wanna kind of go back over the record a little bit. It's true that during that time, the then Secretary Gail Norton uh, was uh, investigated for sharing insider information with Shell Oil, and that matter was referred to the Department of Justice, correct? I believe so. No, no charges were filed, yes. Um, and it was also during that time that the Minerals Management Service, which was what BOEM was, which manages offshore oil and gas drilling, uh, was found to have many, many ethics uh, violations. And in fact, uh, employees at the time were steering contracts, taking thousands of dollars in gifts. They were allowing royalty underpayments by oil companies and essentially uh, engaged in a culture of uh, giveaways and unethical behavior, which ultimately led to a complete reorganization of the mineral management organization, correct? Uh, this is true. I read the inspector general's report uh, and uh, it cost millions of dollars to conduct that investigation. Uh, and unfortunately, the, uh, the whole area there was a disaster zone. Uh, drug use, uh, sex with uh, oil company executives. My favorite line in the report being that a sexual relationship of a federal employee with an oil company uh, official is by definition not an arm's length relationship. Right, so how do we stop this? 
you know, we've seen the same kinds of abuses during the Trump administration. What should this committee and what should Congress be doing to stop this kind of unethical behavior? We need to tighten up the ethics rules with respect to interaction with previous employers. Uh, whether those previous employers are in uh, the oil and gas industry or in environmental groups, even though the vast majority of the corruption has been from the industry side. Previous employers have an un, uh, uh, far more influence on federal agency than other people, and that should be prohibited across the board in the federal government, but the impact of previous employers influencing the Interior Department has been egregious, uh, and we need to cut back on gifts uh, and all the shindigs, the, the free flights, uh, the, the people flying on these airplanes, private jets, and then saying, well, I just flew on a, uh, a, a, an empty seat. It was an empty seat, so I didn't get any gift from the oil company. Uh, I had to have that argument over and over again uh, in the uh, Bush White House. We need to cut out this nonsense uh, where uh, Interior Department and other federal officials are uh, hobnobbing uh, with outside special interests. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Yield back.